but he found a beautiful location by a lake. This is where we'll build ourselves a home. To do so, we need some resources and the construction graph card. The construction graph card allows us to survey the land, claim the land in a lawful system, and it allows us to build structures. As we've already found the location and don't need to claim land in lawless pyro, we can straight dive into building our base. Keep in mind, the following UI is work in progress. A survey drone that deploys from the top of the cart gives us a controllable augmented view of the land. In the new structure mode, we'll pick a small basic structure and hit construct. For this demo, the construction will be instantaneous, but in the final product, this will take you quite some time. We've done it. We've built our first structure. Let's have a look on the inside. As we walk into the small basic structure, we see an empty interior that is dimly lit. It's up to us to define what we will use this space for. In our case, we will want to make it into a home. We can see that the lights are still off, and that is a problem, because no lights means no atmosphere, no breathable atmosphere. So it's not ideal to live in. So how do we solve this issue? We can improve this by providing the building with power. Let's see if we can build something that helps us out. But before we dive into more building, let's take a quick moment to enjoy the freedom that the survey drone provides us with and admire the aesthetics of our first structure. And I wonder what Declan was up doing there. Keep in mind that base building is still work in progress, but what you're seeing right now has been recorded directly in the client and works seamlessly between first person and the building mode. Okay, enough. Back to base building. In the list of new structures, we see a small fuel generator. That is something that could solve our problem, I think. Power providing structures need to be hooked up to other buildings inside construction ER mode, but we'll explain this later. The fuel generator, is one of several structures that provides power, each with their own benefits and drawbacks. Fuel power is quick and easy to build, but it requires a constant supply of fuel besides its regular maintenance. If a structure is not maintained, it will halt its activity. Players will need to maintain fuses to keep the building operational. The better crafted fuse, the longer it lasts. This is where the fuse goes on this building. Next up, we have a terminal that gives us access to the status of our building. And, more importantly, we get to activate it here. That should do it. Let's see if we got power in the building now. As you notice, some of the crates in the background have disappeared as their content has been consumed during the construction process of the buildings. And it looks like Declan is now hooking up the power to the, bil uh, the, power to the building. I wonder what he was up to earlier though. Wow. Declan has been busy decorating the place. As we can see, the lights are now properly working. We got atmosphere, and uh, we can start to use the item fabricator now that there is power. Always handy in case we need a fuse. Let's have a quick look at what we've done so far. We've decorated the place. We made it our own little home. We hooked it up with power. I would say, we have a place that we can live in. It might not be much, but I think it's just enough to call it a home. Thank you. So to kick us off, I called in the help of a friend who has a specialized, not yet revealed, base building vehicle, and he's built us this. It is the construction hub. This has four automated drones compared to the Gravcarts 2. 
They can build small, medium, and large buildings. So far, we've only seen small. Automated drones are capable of building one structure each simultaneously, so four is quite a big advantage. We'll pop into our construction AR and we'll get down a generator, we'll connect some buildings together just so we have a place to call home before we begin. All right, there we go. So we've settled on one of the brand new underground resource deposits and we're about to exploit it using this. It is our extractors. This particular one is a large solid extractor. We'll also have liquid and gas depending on which type of deposit that you've settled on. We have our output grid here where we're getting all the brand new resources up out the ground. And it is important to note that once these things are set up, it's not a case of just free resources forever. On key structures like this, there are fuses which will occasionally be replaced, as well as environmental wear which can be fixed using crafting materials. Now we want to turn those raw resources into the more valuable refined materials we saw the process talked about earlier with Thorsten. Of course we want this, it is our refinery. Once again there are multiple types here, this one is the large solid matter refinery. We have liquid and gas again, as well as biological, depending on the type of materials that you're using and want to produce. Refinery has input and output grids for input, as you might expect, it's for the resources which you're going to consume, and then the output is for the resulting refined goods. This is a terminal where you would select which blueprint you want to use and therefore which type of refining method you want. A lot of crates here with our extractor and our refinery, so we're going to put down our elevator storage. This is really starting to build up now, but it's worth me mentioning again here that whilst we're putting these buildings down instantly in this video, large structures like this, they will take some time with the automated construction drones, but the smaller scale base we saw in the previous video, that can be done in a single play session. We'll just keep on putting down more extractors because we want as much as that valuable resource out of the ground as quick as possible. And with base building, we're introducing the concept of a freight elevator network. What this will allow you to do is it will allow you to link multiple freight elevators together and in turn, they will share the same storage. So as we're doing here, we'll deposit an item on freight elevator A. and then we're retrieving it on freight elevator B. There is a distance limit, but you can daisy chain the elevators together to extend that. And it has to all be contained within the same base. Now, as we expand, we might want to invite more people to join us. This is easy to do. There will be permissions that we can set up granting people access to our base, and they can even build their own structures if they wish. We can also give them access to existing structures, which is how you can form your org storage using those freight elevators.
Now we always want a safe place to store our ships, so the trusty hangar will do. See, it has this large, we call it a foundation tile. It's quite special, and it can actually deform the terrain around it, making it easy to place such a huge structure like this. You can also place other buildings on it, so it's easy for making large, sprawling bases. However, there is one final piece of the puzzle that we need to achieve our goal, and it is this, our very own fabrication hangar. Does anyone want to guess what we're going to build in a fabrication hangar? An Idris, maybe not, maybe not an Idris, if I'm honest. <laughs> we'll have a drive around, we'll go to the entrance and we'll see what's in store for us. like whatever it is, it's just about finished crafting. Of course, we were going to build ourselves a ship.